Last week I teased that I may have invested in a new B camera, and <laughs> that's after selling off my Canon 6D Mark II, my dearly beloved Canon 6D Mark II. It was a wonderful camera, but uh, ever since I switched over to the Fuji ecosystem, I rarely reached for it. Um, I used it mainly as a B camera, uh, but as far as photography and video, it just I, I just didn't feel inspired to use it anymore because yeah, I, I'm so in love with the Fuji ecosystem that this, the X-T4 has quickly become my main photography and uh, video camera. However, I do miss the ability to have that extra angle and I what I really need at this point in my life, photography life if you want to call it that, is a small tiny compact uh, B camera that can also double as a run and gun vlogging and photography camera. But I did mention that I purchased a new B camera and no spoiler alert, it is not the X-S10 as many of you speculated in the comments below. No, my friends, I purchased the Fujifilm XE4. I know, I know. Now, after watching several reviews about this camera online, there's a lot to love and a lot that people are really miffed about when it comes to this camera. Um, as you can see, it's very, there. there's no buttons on here. It's very par down, stripped down, very minimalistic, and I'll get to that in a bit, but what really sold me on this camera is that it's small, lightweight, compact, just like the X100V, but but you can swap out the lenses. And there are days, like I love my X100V, it is a beautiful camera, but the fixed focal length, I'm gonna say, there are days when I just wish, just wish that I could swap out the lenses. Now I can, and it makes me so happy. And also, it has the same innards as the X-T4, so I'm getting all that the X-T4 has to offer in a tiny package, so there's that. And also, this is something that I know pisses off a lot of diehard Fuji users, especially those that are primarily photographers. Um, but if you are a hybrid shooter or wanna use something, or want to use this for vlogging, one of the major things that sold me on this camera is the flip up screen. I simply prefer a flip up screen compared to a flip out screen. That's just my own personal brand of crazy. I feel like it's more compact and honestly when I'm trying to film myself I feel like it's more natural to look up at the screen as opposed to at the side, um, if that makes any sense. Uh, but yeah, it's the, the only thing I will say, and this is a common complaint that I heard about this camera, is the contraption <laughs> that uh, Fuji decided to go with to um, articulate the screen, if that makes any sense. Uh, it, it is a little janky and it looks a little delicate, especially with this little what is that? What is that? I, I, yeah. And while this part does look a little delicate, uh, you know, it, it can, I feel like it's sturdy enough where it can handle a little wear and tear. Um, but you don't want to just outright, you know, toss it around or get it hooked on something because that, that could be very bad. And then also, last but not least, the simple minimalistic design. As you can see, Fuji really simplified the look of this camera. I mean, there are only two buttons back here, a joystick, they did away with the D-pad. Um, there's only one custom button up here that you can noodle around with and then a Q button. It's very minimalistic, but at the end of the day, for the for what I'm going to use this camera for, I absolutely love it. And with the release of this camera, Fuji also released the 27mm pancake lens that they're suggesting you use with this camera because it's so compact and small. Um, however, I decided not to go with that lens. Um, it seems like an awesome lens, very compact and lightweight and would pair perfectly with this, but because that I'm using this as a vlogging camera, the X-E4 does not have IBIS. It is not image stabilized, nor does the 27mm have image stabilization. So yeah, I know, WTF Fuji, why? Why no image stabilization? If you create if you create a, a camera with vlogging in mind, uh, why no IBIS in either the body or the lens? I mean, that that's kind of curious. So to remedy that, I invested in the 15 to 45 millimeter kit lens from, I'm not exactly sure when it was released, but it fit the bill for what my needs are with this camera. Uh, it has OIS, so op optical image stabilization, which counteracts the fact that the EXE4 does not have IBIS. So that works out really nicely, but also it has a great focal range for vlogging. So yeah, 15 millimeter, you have your wide focal length and then 45 millimeter if you want to zoom in on something. Um, I think it's really great and versatile for my personal vlogging needs. And I also did go 
ahead and invest in a neutral density filter for those sunny days so I can continue shooting cinematically. Once the weather starts getting nicer and once COVID hopefully starts going away, I really want to get out there more and start vlogging, uh, you know, my travels and uh, day in the life stuff. And, you know, at, at the beginning of the pandemic, a friend of mine actually got into roller skating and I thought that that looked so fun and so cool that I wanted to try it myself. Turns out I really, really love roller skating and I only fell into it like towards the end of, um, you know, around fall, the end of fall before the weather got really crappy. Um, so now that the weather's getting nicer, I'm getting out there more and practicing. So I definitely want to vlog my progress. Um, if, is that something you guys want to see on this channel? I don't know, let me, let me know in the comments below. I can make that happen. And again, this is just subjective. This is all subjective. It comes down to what your personal needs are when it comes to photography and video and this is where I'm at and this is this is everything that I'm looking for. Um, you know, there are some pros and cons as I've quickly come to learn after watching several reviews on YouTube. I mean, particularly the focus mode button. That, I mean, that would have been nice to have on here. That is the one button that I am missing. But I mean, how hard is it to just go into the menu system and set your focus mode? I mean, I have it set up so I can rifle switch quickly between uh, autofocus and manual where it's like I hold down the shutter button halfway and then use the highlight focus peaking mode to set my focus so it's it's the best of both worlds and not a deal breaker for me at all and if there are only two buttons in here excellent I know what I'm tapping on here and I can just easily you know feel my way around the menu system or what have you um, it's very very intuitive and yeah I I love it so I thought I would just go down a list of pros, cons, and grievances that other people have had about this camera and, you know, talk about workarounds and why why this camera just works for me. But first, uh, just a quick word from my amazing sponsor, Skillshare. Oh yeah, this, this channel has sponsors now. I'm so excited. Skillshare is an online learning community platform where you can learn just about anything. If you're new to photography or video or maybe thinking about starting your own YouTube channel, Skillshare has a plethora of online courses for you to get started. I absolutely love Sorella Moore's class for building an authentic channel and Marquez Brownlee's class, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit. If this sounds like something that you're into, click on the link in the description box below and you can try Skillshare for two weeks absolutely free on yours truly. You're welcome. And thank you, Skillshare. We've already discussed that there is no focus switch mode, but you know, that I found a workaround for. So moving along to the fact that there is no D-pad. While it's very handy on my X-T4, you know, for more specialized shooting and, you know, fine tuning what I'm trying to shoot, if that makes any sense, it's great. It's great for that situation. But again, for running and gunning, I don't need a D-pad, uh, especially because they allow you to customize the swipes on the back of the screen. So while there's no D-pad, you can customize your screen to swipe left, right, up, down for specific functions, which I think is brilliant. Honestly, I didn't even set that up yet because I just found I haven't needed to do that, but it's there. It's there if you need it. The second gripe that many people have is that the EX4 does not have IBIS, image stabilization, but again, you can remedy that, fix that with a lens that has OIS. So again, I've planted a 15 to 45 millimeter uh, lens on here. It's great, it's compact, it's got OIS, and yeah, that takes the whole lack of IBIS out of the equation for me. No grip, no grip. They've, they've gotten rid of the grip, and if you recall my previous videos, you know how much I love a good grip on, on a camera. This is something that I kind of wish they included, um, the built into there, but they didn't, but I'm okay with that. You know, I have, I've got tiny lady hands, it can handle that, but Fuji realized this, so they provided add-ons. So you can purchase an add-on grip. Uh, it screws into the base and it gives you a little something to cling to uh, along with a thumb rest, uh, which it, I think each one is like 80 something dollars US. And that was kind of an insult to my wallet, just, just a smidge. Um, but you know what? This is a new camera and there are plenty of third-party companies out there uh, that I'm sure in due time, they will come out with their own version of the grip for a fraction of the price. I know Ulanzi and iRig are very popular when it comes to those things, but I wanna keep this set up as lightweight as possible, so I really don't need a grip, especially if I have this uh, you know, mini tripod uh, that kind of extends and everything, I can just do that. So that eliminates the need for a grip, honestly. Uh, so again, not a deal breaker. Like the focus mode switch, I kinda sorta do wish that they also included a a photo slash movie switch. I mean, how cool would it be just to be like, oh, I'm gonna vlog now. Oh, I'm gonna take photos now. But again, I'm perfectly okay going into the drive menu and just 
switching between photo and video there. It's not that hard. One grievance that I don't really get uh, that people have about this camera is that it only has EVF, an electric viewfinder, as opposed to including both, uh, an OVF and an EVF. Um, I mean, I get the I get the difference between the two, but I don't understand why that would be a deal breaker for some, or people are just up in arms about that. Um, yeah, I'm okay with this having an EVF. It's it's fine, you know. I like taking photos through the viewfinder, and it's it's cool being EVF. Yeah, bring it. Ah, but what about audio, you say? <laughs> yes, this is the major bee in my bonnet when it comes to this camera. If I have anything to complain about, it is the audio setup. Because, because my friends, Fuji, for whatever reason, decided to plant the Hachi mount smack dab in the middle of the, on, on top of the camera. This is ridiculous because if you do have a microphone mounted onto the X-E4 and you're trying to vlog uh, and you have the screen up, yeah, the microphone is gonna block the screen. So, WTF Fuji, why? Why? I mean, I get it, they're trying to keep this small, lightweight, compact, but I mean, they, they could've, I, you know, I mean, there's some blank space right here, why couldn't they just put the hot shoe mount here? So you just mount your microphone and it's pointing that way, and then you just, put the wire into the mic jack over there. I don't know, they, they could have gotten a little more creative with that. So what's the workaround? I found the best solution to be the Rode Wireless Go. And as you can see, I have it here. It's very tiny, very compact. Uh, it just clips onto my camera strap and it plugs into the mic jack up here. And while I did see somebody on YouTube clip the mic onto the, um, the metal frame over here for the flip-up screen, that kind of makes me a little nervous. Because as I mentioned, the, the metal frame on the flip-up screen, it feels a little fragile, and leaving this clipped on here would just kind of make me nervous if I was just running and gunning with this. Um, so I opt to just clip it onto the camera strap. Uh, that, that makes me feel so much better, but you know, it is an option if you're just, you know, mounting it somewhere. Um, but yeah, this little part right here just kind of clips onto um, your lapel. I like to keep it clipped on on the inside like this so it's kind of hidden. I finished working on some stuff this morning so I thought that I would just come out and get a little skating practice in. <laughs> I'm here at this park and the perks of getting out early is that I have this entire place to myself which is so good. My one gripe about the Rode Wireless Go are the little tiny dead cats that it comes with. I mean, how cute are these? They're, they're, they're like little tiny tribbles or soot sprites from Spirited Away. I should, I should get a pair of googly eyes for it. As cute and adorable as these little dead mice are, uh, this is my main problem with the Rode Wireless Go system because they don't want to stay on. It came off a couple of times while I was skating. I lost my little dead cat. Doo, 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 doo. Circle the dead cat. These things suck. I know the second generation, the Rode Wireless Go 2, has a better uh, dead cat attachment system happening, but for my needs and what I plan to use this camera for, I didn't need to invest the extra $100. So um, I went with the first generation uh, Rode Wireless Go, and yeah, again, the audio quality is great. Um, I just have to figure out how I'm gonna get these little dead cats to stay put when I use them. So my Fujifilm X-T4 that I'm shooting on right now has become my main photography and video camera, while my X-100V has become my go-to uh, run and gun street photography slash casual knock around photography camera. This has become my Swiss army knife. I mean, this is this camera is what it would be if the X-T4 and the X-100V had a baby. I've used this camera so much in the past two weeks for vlogging, my roller skating, for product photography, for my small business, um, for, you know, just getting shots here and there, like B-roll camera shots when I'm using the X-T4. Um, it's a great, handy, nifty camera. So while it's completely stripped of all the bells and whistles that we've all come to know and love, when it comes to Fuji cameras, uh, I absolutely love it. It's doing what I want it to do. It suits my needs when it comes to vlogging and photography. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to just have more adventures with this camera. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by Fuji yet, but uh, you know, these are just my honest opinions about this camera and my experience with it uh, and what my shooting needs are. Uh, but you know, if you have any questions, ask me in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, or do you have an X-E4? Uh, let me know what you think about this camera in the comments 
below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, as I'm sure a lot of other people would as well, interested in this camera. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys, again, found that helpful. If you haven't already and you're new here, welcome. Feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next video, see ya! Thank you.